In this video, I'll be solving problems which are given in problem set 2.3 in the book D. M. Burton. And this is the sixth edition book in from which I have taken this exercise problem set 2.3, which is mostly based on division algorithm and greatest common divisor. So now let us look at what is the first problem. In the question one, it is given that if A divides B, then we need to show negative of A divides B, A divides negative of B, negative of A divides negative of B. And to show this, this is very simple. It's just by definition. We can see that what is given to us, given is that A divides B. So when A divides B, so this means B is equal to A times R for some R belonging to integer. And now we want to show minus of A divides B. So labeling this as 1 and so from 1, we can simply write this as B is equal to minus of A into minus of R or we can simply say negative of A into negative of R which is the same expression. This is equal to B minus of A and let's call this as R dash where R dash this is equal to minus of R and again it belongs to integer. So from here we can say minus A divide B or B is appearing as a multiple of negative of A. So minus A divide B. So this was the first part that we want to show. Now let's to show the second part. We want to show A divides negative of B and for this part also from 1 I am going to write minus of B as A times minus of R. So what I did, I have just multiplied a negative here and a negative here and which is same as equation number 1 and so from here I can directly say A divides negative of B and that proves our this uh, second assertion. Now to show the third assertion and here we want to show negative of A divides negative of B and again in this case now I'll take the equation from 1. So from 1 we can write this as negative of B is equal to negative of A into R. And so from there we can write negative of A divides negative of R because negative of B is appearing a multiple as of minus A. So this proves our third assertion in this question. In question 2 we want to show given integers A, B, C, D verify the following. So the first part asks if A divide B then A divide B, C. And then from here we can see that uh, as A divide B this we can write it as b is appearing a multiple of a so it is a r for some r belonging to integer and then multiply both side by c so if i multiply both side by c we get b c is equal to a times c times r this is equal to a into c r and let's keep this c r as one integer and then from here we can directly say that a times something is BC. So from here we can say that A divide BC and this is what we desire to prove in this question. In this second problem, we want to show that if A divide B and A divide C, then A square divide BC. And for this also again, as A divide B, so I can write this as B can be written as A times R. And as A divide C, so this implies I can write C as A times S. Now, since we want to prove BC is divisible by A square or A square is dividing BC. So let's consider BC and which means it is the product of these two quantities. So B and C multiply these two. So we get AR and then we get A times S which is A square and then RS. So BC is appearing as a multiple of A square or I can say A square divide B times C. So that proves our second uh, case. Now for the third case, A divides B if and only if AC divide BC and C is not equal to 0. So now let us say as A divide B, so first I will consider this portion and I will prove AC divide BC. So B can be written as AR for some R belonging to integer. Multiply both side by C so we get ACR and then from here we can get AC divide bc so that's one part now conversely let us prove this result conversely so for conversely we have been given ac divide bc so this implies a uh, bc is equal to ac times some s for some s belonging to integer and from here now c is not equal to zero as we said c is non-zero quantity so we can cancel it out had this been zero we could not do the cancellation so cancelling this since this is non-zero we get B is equal to A times S and hence we can get A divide B. So this proves our result which is if and only if. 
Now for the last case, d part as a divide b, so this implies b is equal to a times r, and as c divides d, so this gives me d is equal to c s. Now simply multiply these two equations, so we get b d is equal to a r c s. So multiplying these two, we get this one, and from here we can get b c b d is equal to a c into r s. And this is again integers. So the product of r and s were integers, so the product is further integer. So this implies that a c divide b d. So this proves our d part also. In question number three, we want to prove or disprove if a divide b plus c, then either a divide b or a divide d. So this assertion we need to either prove or disprove. And for this, I'm going to give a counter example to disprove. So this is not a correct statement. and we are disproving this by giving the counter example and to give the counter example we can see that 2 divides 3 plus 3 so that means we can say 2 divide 6 or the 6 is written as this 6 is written as 3 plus 3 so and we can see that but 2 does not divide 3 and 2 does not divide 3 so here i have considered the same number 3 and 3 let us take one more example where i take different numbers so in this example i can take 2 divides 5 plus 7 because 2 divides 12 but 2 does not divide 5 and 2 does not divide 7 so this assertion is not true because we are saying in the assertion that either a divide b or a divide c so at least one of the integers should be divisible but we can see here that it is not dividing any of the integer whereas it is dividing the sum of the integer in question number 4 we want to prove this question using mathematical induction and we want to establish the given assertion given divisibility statement and there are five sub parts so the first part says 8 divide 5 raised to power 2n plus 7 this is what we need to show using the mathematical induction so let's prove this for the mathematical induction we need to prove in the steps let us consider when n is equal to 1 whether the statement is true or not in this case this will become 5 raised to power 2 into 1 plus 7 should be a multiple of 8 because 8 divide something so it should be 8 times k and we can see that 5 square that is 25 plus 7 this is 32 32 is appearing 8 into 4 so the value for k and we can say for some k belonging to integer so that means the statement is true the result is true for n is equal to 1 and so we can take 8 divide 32 and assume that result is true for n is equal to k so this means 8 divides 5 to the power 2 times k plus 7 and we need to prove the result for n is equal to k plus 1 so that means what we need to prove is to prove that 8 divides 5 to the power 2 times k plus 1 plus 7 so this is what we need to prove using the assumption step and now let's start from this side so this means 5 to the power twice of k plus 1 Plus seven should appear as a multiple of eight, and let's open this. This is five square into five to the power two k plus seven. Now we know this is five square, and five to the power two k plus seven minus five square into seven plus seven. So I have added and subtracted the same quantity. This five square into seven term is added here, and the same term is subtracted here. So now. since we are adding and subtracting the same term here we can apply the induction step because you know that the result is true for n is equal to k so this means from here we can say that 5 raised to power 2k plus 7 is appearing some multiple of this 8 so now i'm going to reuse this result so this become 5 square into 8 times q minus 5 square into 7 plus 7 and now i'm going to take 7 common from the remaining last two terms which means it is 8 q minus 7 into 5 square minus 1 so this gives me 5 square into 8 q minus 7 5 square is 25 minus 1 that is 24 so this quantity becomes 8 q into 25 minus 7 into 24 And twenty four, we know this is appearing as a multiple of eight. This is eight into three. So from these two quantity further, we can take eight common. So once we take eight common, inside we have twenty five q minus seven into three. That is twenty one. So this is eight into twenty five q minus twenty one. But this is uh, again an integer since q is integer, twenty five is integer. All this is integer, and hence we can note that eight divides five to the power two times k plus one. Plus seven, and this completes induction step, and hence result is true for all n greater than or equal to one. So in B part, we want to show fifteen divide. 
2 to the power 4 and minus 1 again uh, using the mathematical induction so you can see that the steps are exactly same i have proved for n is equal to 1 then i have assumed for n is equal to k and we want to prove for n is equal to k plus 1 so when we have assumed for n is equal to k we know that 2 to the power 4 k minus 1 is 15 times some integer q so q belonging to integer for some q and this i am using it here when i have written when i am proving it for k plus 1 we just split the term and 2 times 4 k minus 1 is replaced as 15 k so again we are adding and subtracting 2 to the power 4 add and subtract the same term and we finally see that 15 is appearing as a multiple of this term and hence this uh, is also proved in c part we want to prove 5 divide 3 to the power 3 n plus 1 plus 2 to the power n plus 1 and we continue in the same way Proof for n is equal to 1, we get 5 divided 85 which is true for assume the result for n is equal to k and so we say that 3 raised to the power 3k plus 1 plus 2 to the power k plus 1 is a multiple of 5 and now we want to prove the result for n is equal to k plus 1 which means we want to show that this expression holds and so taking the uh, this uh, left hand side we show that this is a mul uh, appearing as a multiple of 5. And here again the same uh, technique we have used we have added and subtracted the same quantity so add and subtract the same quantity keeping in mind that we have to use this previous step which is the induction step uh, for n is equal to k and so now clubbing this term with this one and clubbing this term with this one so we get this is the uh, same expression which we can use it for the assumption step when we take n is equal to k so replace and we get the result similarly we proved the d part 21 divides 4 to the power n plus 1 plus 5 to the power 2 n minus 1 we can see that and similarly we proved 24 divide 2 into 7 raised to power n plus 3 into 5 raised to power n minus 5 and for this prove it for n is equal to 1 n is equal to k and we assume the result for n is equal to k giving us this equation star now we want to prove for n is equal to k plus 1 that means we have this expression and here again with the adding and subtracting and manipulating some of the terms and using this star that i have used here we replace it by 24q and then we have got the first term which is appearing as a multiple of 24 that we desire to prove but the second term is something 2 into uh, 2 times 7 raised to power k plus 20 and i've renamed this as 24 times some p okay and i've shown here that this term is actually appearing as a multiple of 24 and to show this expression i've again taken the induction proof so i want to show it separately 24 divide 4 into 7 days to power k plus 20 the same expression and this proof also i've added uh, using the induction we prove the result is for k is equal to 1 this is true for k we have this expression 24 times k, q dash and so we show that this expression is divisible by 24 so that means here i can use that if this is divisible by 24 so that means this expression which is 2 into 2 into 7 raised to power k which is 4 into 7 raised to power k plus 20 is divisible by 24 and now you see that both expression are appearing as a multiple of 24 so we can say that 24 divide this uh, term 2 into 7 raised to power n plus 3 into 5 raised to power n minus 5 and hence this completes our induction step in question number 5 we want to show that for any integer a one of the integer a a plus 2 a plus 4 is divisible by 3 and to prove this let us consider that whenever we consider an integer n which is an integer this can be of the form either 3k 3k plus 1 or 3k plus 2 when divided by 3 so whenever we divide an integer by 3 we can get this either of this form or we can say that the remainder is either 0, 1 or 2. So considering these forms, let me to consider the separate forms for the integer a. So since this is any integer, either a can take the form 3k or a can take the form 3k plus 1 or a can take the form 3k plus 2. So for all of these terms, we'll verify and we want to show that these integers one of these integers must be divisible by 3. So if a is of the form 3k, then a is of the form 3k and a plus 2 will become 3k plus 2 and a plus 4 will become 3k plus 4. So 3k plus 4 I can further write it as 3k plus this 4 I can split it into as 3 plus 1. So this is 3 into k dash plus 1. 
so now we can see that this a this is divisible by 3 because it is appearing as a multiple of 3 and the other leave the remainder 0 or, uh, so this leaves the remainder 0 so this is fully divisible by 3 and this leaves the remainder 1 and this leaves the remainder 2 now for the next case when you take a is equal to 3k plus 1 in the similar way when a takes 3k plus 1 a plus 2 this takes 3k plus 1 and then we are adding plus 2 so that's the value for a which means it becomes 3k plus 3 now this is actually a multiple of 3 so we can take k plus 1 or we can rename this as k dash so we see that this is divisible by 3 and it leaves the remainder 0 this leaves the remainder 1 and in the same way we can verify a plus 4 which is 3k plus 1 and then we are adding plus 4 so this means it comes 3k plus 5 so 5 we can write it as 3 plus 2 so 3 we can come at and write it as k dash plus 2 so this leaves the remainder 2 so one of them is divisible by 3 and similarly we can prove this case